Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press. We have a quick review of the major news stories making the headlines this morning, and we will be joined by a guest in a bit to also have his uh, analysis of these uh, stories. I'm starting with the Punch newspapers this morning. Let's see what we can find over there. Big one says, sales overcrowded as Jusun strike enters second week. Court shot. Inspector General of Police orders men to avoid unnecessary arrest. Prolonged strike could cause tension in correctional centers, says uh, NCOS. Also, Ngige begs judiciary workers. Union says 2015 agreement not implemented. DPR revokes 20, uh, 32 refinery licenses, says Dangote plants 80% complete. Also, Nigeria making progress on COVID-19 vaccine rapid testing kits, says the vice president. Arms probe. Reps fume as chief of army staff confronts panel. Mephila shuns lawmakers. And also, former President Goodluck Jonathan is in the news, saying we should criminalize vote buying and voter inducement. Twelve soldiers killed by bandits in Benue, buried. And also, Southwest PDP Congress, Arapaja emerges uh, chairman, Makinde Fayoshi settle differences. Last month, policemen knock out driver's teeth in brutal attack. And also, ICPC monitoring COVID-19 vaccine distribution to curb theft. That is from the NPHCDA. Those are some of the big stories that we have um, on the Punch newspapers this morning. Okay, so I've got The Guardian, and the major headline here says, New Nigerian COVID strain jolts UK city after a rise in case or cases. I've got lots of riders, so I'm just going to do a couple of those riders. The first one here says, um, How Pandemic Opened Up Talents of Nigerian Scientists. That's coming from President Buhari. And then we have this one coming from the WHO. It says, Ramadan. Uh, WHO warns of possible surge in COVID-19 cases. You want to check that out. It's on the front page of The Guardian. And then we have this one right below uh, the picture of the day. Uh, you see Southwest PDP closes ranks, vows to defeat APC. Uh, by the way, uh, the pictures of the day, you see the um, NSCDC, DG and of course the Minister of Health. So you have this one, like I said earlier on, Southwest PDP closes ranks, vows to defeat APC, and then right below you have um, Hold Ihejirika Dambazao Buratai, others responsible for arms purchase, uh, COAS tells reps. We also have Dan Gote lamenting misinformation and then he denies increase in cement price. You want details of that, just go to page three. And then you have this one here. Muslims begin Ramadan fast today as Sultan announces sighting of moon. And then uh, we have more, right? We have this one, last but not least. Um, A.U. Mofe selected for 50th anniversary edition of New Directors and New Films in New York. That's some entertainment for you. Uh, that's about it on the front page of The Guardian. All right, let's uh, quickly skip to the Daily Independent uh, this morning. It says there, federal government beefs up uh, security at airports over a terrorist threat. Nigeria on precipice over Buhari's wrong choices. That is from Abaribe. Soldiers and policemen deployed after attack on Ebony villages claimed four. Rising inflation models CBN's price stability mandate. And also Aerofi plans sack of public servants in Kaduna. We can also find on the Daily Independent factory price of our cement not more than 2,510 naira. And that's from Dangote. And uh, also former President Goodluck Jonathan says ballots, not courts, should determine winners of elections. Bandits kill two burn houses and vehicles in Kaduna Council. And also PDP seeks to dislodge APC in 2023 as Zara Paja wins a Southwest Zonal Chair. Um, those are the big ones on the Daily Independent this morning. Oh, okay. So I hold my horses. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have a guest with us in the studio to talk more on uh, the major headlines. Stay with us.
Welcome, Mike. Uh, like we promised, we are back and stronger. Chris Wandu, publisher CKN News, joins us this morning. It's good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Also, it's good to be here. Yeah, so I was just going to launch the Nigerian Tribune. So I'll take a couple of stories and then we'll have you talk about it. Yeah. So the, the major Nigerian Tribune, the major uh, headline here is about the unfortunate incident in Benue State. But let me talk about the picture of the day. It's, it's, it's very disturbing. Corpses of 12 soldiers killed in uh, Benue State there. Uh, and then right above the picture, you have the major headline, Otom apologizes as army buries 12 soldiers killed by bandits in Benue State. And above the masthead, we have this one from uh, Dangote. He says, uh, we have not increased cement price in 15 months. And right beside that, we have this one from El Rufai. He says, my government not elected to pay salaries alone. You want to find out what he has to say, go to page uh, 29. And then you, you have Moon cited, Ramadan begins, that's coming from the Sultan. And then you have Boko Haram activities triggered humanitarian crisis from 2014. That's coming from the federal government. You have just one rider to that story. It says, uh, maps out three focal po uh, support areas. Uh, that's the federal government now. Uh, let me take one more story because you have a lot of them here on the front page of uh, the tri Tribune. FG inaugurates probe panels on 21 colleges and 25 polytechnics, right? So, uh, Osage, do you want to take one of your papers before we talk about the... Um, I think we'll just, you know, go through the punch once again. Okay. Um, just a couple of uh, the ones that we should share, you know, so mm. we can get our guest in. Yeah. Uh, the one that says uh, the DPR revokes 32 refinery licenses, says Dangote plant 80% complete, and also sales overcrowded as Jisun strike into second week. Courts are shot. 12 soldiers killed by bandits are buried in uh, Benue. And uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan's in the news saying we should criminalize vote buying and uh, voter inducement. Uh, Southwest PDP Congress, Arapaja emerges chair, Makinde and Fayoshi settle differences. And also uh, ICPC monitoring COVID-19 vaccine distribution uh, to curb theft. Those are the big ones on the uh, Punch newspapers this morning. Um, let's just bring in Chris Wandu here. Uh, there's a couple of very interesting ones. Um, I'm not sure which you would like to start from. Well, I want to start with, um, first of all, uh, my condolences to the families of the two soldiers that were buried yesterday. That, yeah. to me, <clears throat> is the height of it all. And um, these are human beings, and these are Nigerians, and these are young men who um, have taken the responsibility of making us safe mm -hmm. and just killed, and not just only killed, brutally killed, and not uh, only also brutally killed, they were born beyond recognition, and that's the height of it. And uh, when I saw the apologies from the governor of, um, um, governor of Benue State, that's not good enough for me. It's not just we can continue apologizing for whatever it is, what but the fact is that we have to make sure that uh, the perpetrators of this evil act are caught and prosecuted. That has always been my issue. Um, so many, so many criminals going around, the banditry, kidnapping, killing, and the rest of them, and we don't seem to be doing anything about it. Not that we are not doing, we are not doing enough. And um, most of those that were arrested have not been actually been made to uh, uh, to face the full weight of the law, um, either through our own carelessness or because we just feel that there is need for us to grant amnesty to uh, bandits, and that in itself fuel more criminality. So um, I am, I'm up to, I, 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 personally I wouldn't offer the option of um, um, jail time. It should be <laughs> the ultimate price. They should pay the ultimate price. And the higher time we start doing that, the better. That's the only way we can get this issue solved. And what uh, you mean is? <laughs> well, if you kill, you must be killed. And that's it. Um, it's not so a situation where we say, oh, they are said. Even if you go to, the, to, to, our, to our, our jails, into prisons, so many people that have been condemned to death for over 20 years now are still there. Yes, uh, international community will say whatever they like. But even in the United States, you have been seeing people being executed. Yeah. So you understand, it doesn't have to be by the gun. There are other conventional, modern conventional way of doing it. I think we should start making people pay the, the price. Look at this. Uh, for one individual that, is, that dies, it's not only him that is dying. They are dependents. There are some people that are depending on the wife, the children, the brothers and sisters. You have practically killed them. 
-hmm. Because if they are dependent on that guy, then their life of mean, uh, livelihood is a uh, means of livelihood is uh, so uh, that to me uh, is does, a hard does, one. Does it make it worse that we have some of them uh, that are called repentant? In whatever form, I don't believe in all this repentant. I have said this several times. Repentant, what? Having to see some of them that are repentant, immediately after they are uh, repentantly, whatever you, terms you want to use, then they go back and also commit more crimes. Yes, uh, it's only in the Bible, I don't know of the Quran, that when you say, oh, your sins are forgiven you. But in this, in this present time, the kind of things that these guys are doing is not something that is worth anybody uh, uh, giving them any level of amnesty. And I'm totally against that. I am totally against that. Or else we'll continue to see what we are doing. It's not only soldiers that are 12 soldiers. Do you know what it takes to train a, train a single soldier? And how many soldiers do we have? And that is, and these guys are not that they are going on legitimate duty. Not that they were, they are going on their own. And so people just uh, move around and just kill them. Mm -hmm. Then right. we can move to other issues: the issue of um, the the court workers that are on strike. Uh, well, I, I heard that they are meeting again next week, and uh, and that is the, pro the, the 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 need for autonomy for the judiciary is key, whether we like it or not. Just that, we, just as we've been fighting for. Um, those are the uh, legislators. Um, that is just as we've been fighting for that of the local government. Every sector of our political sphere should be allowed to fight as an independent, so that they can work independently. The part of the problem is that the executive is so is just like an octopus that it seems to uh, swallow every other um, arms of government, and that in itself is not good enough. It's not good for our democracy. So if that was a uh, a, a, a law that was signed by the president. I don't, I don't know why we should be able to, to give them autonomy. I don't know why we cannot be able to... You know, this thing that. about um, the LG autonomy you just talked about, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, Bajabia Mila, put out a statement mm -hmm. recently to say is that uh, they tried to do it, but that the states, the states refused to support it. Well, so he said the onus lies on the people now, not the national assembly. That is whether it's the state, yeah, before, if, if, whether the state or not, the fact is that, first and foremost, I think the federal government is already doing I don't know if they've uh, tried to. The, what is behind all this is that money that is given to local governments. Mm -hmm. Yes. It goes directly to the state governments. Mm -hmm. So we should find a way of sending it directly to the local government. But the problem there is that even those that are the local government, can they, can they even talk? The local government chairman is just an appendage of the governor. Is that big. If you just, you just remove them. So we should, if we are going to go autonomy, let us make it total autonomy. Mm -hmm. So that each and every, the nearest level of governance is local government. Mm -hmm. They are the ones closer to the people. So if we lose that, it, it's a value chain. If we lose that chain, then there's a problem. Because the governor cannot be in every local government and every community in the state. So it's the local government that certain, they have certain responsibilities that they're supposed to take care of. At their own level. Yes. But they are not even doing that. They can't do that because of lack of funds. At the end of it, the, the, the governor just gave up five, five million stipend, which is not even good enough to, to pay the salaries of the workers. So that is the issue we are having. All right. Then we can move on to... Um, Let's talk about the Southwest uh, PDP. Uh, I was just there. I was okay. good enough. Um, um, yesterday, they were, they were able to resolve their issue. Tafika uh, Arapala. Um, Arapaja. Or Arapaja, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he used to be a deputy governor, you know, yesterday or something like that. So, um, came out and um, Makinde and Fayesha have been able to resolve their issue. And um, Fayesha has agreed that Makinde uh, is his leader. And um, the, the person that lost also agreed to work hand in hand with That's the um, Eddie so, Olafes, right? Yeah, yeah. so um, I think that is sorted out. And I hope the, whole thing, the same thing pans out in a, a, other um, uh, geopolitical zone in the country. So uh, that, uh, how, how important, you know, is um, leadership of Southwest PDP as, as it stands? They, they don't have that many states. Um, and how much, you know, can they really gather for the PDP? They, they can. You, you'd be surprised. Um, when you look at the, um, the way it's structured, yes, a, a, APC seems to be having the, so a bit, a, PDP is very, very strong in Southwest, whether I like mm -hmm. it or not. Um, don't forget there was a time that PDP was the dominant um, party in Southwest. Yeah. Uh, there was a time that it was only APC then or AD then. I only had one state, which was Lagos State. The others were there, but APC was able to walk itself around and be able to capture some of them. But with what is happening recently and some level of disenchantment with the 
um, APC mantra and the promises they made in 2015, you'll be shocked that anything can happen in 2020. To me, politics is, um, is just like one day and one, one minute, one second. Anything can change. The dynamics can change. If the people get so agitated and the APC, PDP can put their ass together, that's possible that they may be able to win one or two other states in, in, in 20. So um, they are in strong standing. APC is, a PDP is more standing now than they were in 2015. Because the, in 2015, everything looked forward to President um, Muhammad Buhari. The people saw him at the change mantra and has all to give. And don't forget that Buhari is not coming back in 2023. So it's an open race. Mm -hmm. well, let's see how that plays out. And of course, the DPR um, rejecting uh, 32 refinery licenses and uh, speaking about the Dangote refinery being 80% complete. Yes. Um, yes. We, we don't forget that um, uh, in the past, uh, um, licenses we were given for modular modular refineries and we never saw anything out of it so people can just not just have a license for the fun of it if they have the licenses and they're not doing what they're supposed to do all well language should be uh, but we need to find out why why we are those licenses we are not where we are then not utilized it could be that it was not attractive to those that uh, had it if at the end of it so the government continues saying oh we've deregulated but they are still facing prices of uh, petrol that in this uh, becomes a problem mm -hmm. so that means you have a cap already so you cannot, irrespective of whatever you put your input yes. in, a, in, a, a, in is a, a refining, your, there's a level that, to which you can. So if you leave it to a, a free market, um, to the market forces to be able to do just how we have in the telecom. At a point, at a point, we were buying SIM card for 15,000 15, naira. Mm -hmm. Remember when you had your first, yes. um, the first um, SIM card? It was about 15, 20, and the rest of them. <laughs> now it practically goes for free. That is what the uh, free market does. And um, if the, the, the DPR should do a very good um, investigation and find out why they were not utilized, then that go to coming up 80%. Yes, very beautiful, lovely. But to me, I hope we end up with a monopoly, which also will put us in the same mess that we are presently going. If Dangote decides to sell his way for uh, 300 naira per liter, nobody can challenge him because he has the market. We're already mm -hmm. having that in some other areas already, if you understand what I mean. Which is where the regulation comes in. Yeah. And the rest of them. And so I am not for monopolistic. What we need to do is the federal government should build more refineries. Mm -hmm. As they promised. Oh, that's what they're doing with Port Harcourt, isn't Which it? Port Harcourt? <laughs> well, Which Port Harcourt? Uh, $1.5 billion. Building uh, or, uh, or refurbishing. refurbishing. Have you, are you not tired of hearing of this refurbishing? So, so you Do you know how much has been pumped into the refurbishing? You want Kaduna, government... Kaduna, Wari, and, um, uh, and Port Harcourt. But this one it seems to be serious. They, so you're very signed... optimistic. In the next one year, on this program, I will, I will share this. I will want you to share this optimism with me. Okay, fingers crossed. So it looks like you, you want biz, uh, um, government to be involved in business. Uh, some people say government has no business with business. Government has no business in this, but in every country, there's always subsidy for it. The people must have something that they gain from the government. In the, gov in the United States, agriculture is subsidized. There are so many aspects of of this thing that is subsidized, that people must get. At the end of it, though, during the COVID, US were giving $5,000, $1,500, and what did you get? Mm. Oh. If not for the, if, uh, let me not use the word, but the so-called word that, they, you know, we are going to. I know where you're okay, going to. So as we try to wrap this segment <laughs> yeah. up, I, I got a daily independent. Quickly, FG beefs up security at airports over terrorist threats. Right. And then mm. El Rufai plans sack of public servants in Kaduna. Mm. This thing about um, sacking public servants, is it related to what um, the governor of Kano State had said about cutting cost of government and all of that? Uh, the, what he said is that he, he, he's not in government to only pay salaries. And that to me is key. Mm -hmm. um, most often than not, when we look at um, payment of salary, people just look at it from the art space. But how many, what is the percentage of those in the public, in the public and uh, private sector? And so if the governor says, I'm not going to use all the money of Kaduna State to pay salaries, then fine. But he was also elected to pay salaries. It's mm -hmm. part of what he was elected to. So he should be able to juggle this in as much as providing necessary amenities to Nigeria, the people of Kaduna State. But he must also pay salaries. And if you think that that is not good enough, fine. Then the, 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 the alerts that came, uh, came in last night mm -hmm. uh, at airport, we should be very, very careful. About five airports uh, have been designated as high risk uh, um, airports that um, the criminals may strike anytime from now. That is uh, something wow. be, uh, a warning being foreclosed, and I believe that security agencies 
we'll be able to well, do that. So that we don't, what happened in Imo State won't repeat itself yeah. in other places. Good. You know, the Kaduna and so many other airports have been attacked. Mm -hmm. And um, staff of FAN have been, have been kidnapped and the rest of them. Good mm -hmm. thing, you know, we have um, options of railway system and, and good roads that mm -hmm. we can travel on. Mm -hmm. not, so not everybody not for, has not, not, not for people like us, no. It's, it, it, forget that. Um, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I practically spent all my time in the battle. But it doesn't see me jumping on a train from uh, a Jew and uh, this. even you, having to see the world, the track that we are laid that some people have stolen all the tracks. Oh, <laughs> Did you see that video? Let us forget that one. Let us continue to manage the world we have now. And that uh, who will jump into train? The one that started, that goes from Abuja to Kaduna that breaks on the uh, on the way at midnight and people are crying and shouting and begging. The one bandit to attack them. Good thing our roads are safe and we can. Oh, your roads are safe. Yeah. You are the greatest optimist I ever seen. It's good. It's a good thing. Let's be optimistic. We don't, we don't all need to fly. Right? Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Just, just, just go to Benin from Lagos and come back and I shake and shake uh, hug you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for it's having me. It's a safe been. place for us tonight. We've been much. talking with Chris Wandu. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a short break. When we come back, more for you. So stick with us.